a look into the research past shows that our domestic planetary system has undergone some changes. We don't just mean the different phases the respective celestial bodies went through in the course of their existence, but rather the technical discussion about which objects in the solar system are actually recognized as official planets. Pluto is the most prominent representative of those celestial bodies that have lost their planetary status. In the 19th century, Juno, Vesta, and Astria had been discovered and taken up to the squadron of our planetary system. Only afterwards was it recognized that they are in truth asteroids. While in the past some celestial bodies have been mistaken for planets, the situation is completely different in other cases, namely when there is no trace of a supposed planet. Together with you, we would like to investigate today what might be the largest cosmic missing persons case in history and pursue a highly exciting question. Where is the mysterious Planet X hiding? Would you like to join us on our journey to the greatest mysteries of the universe? Then remember to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell to stay up to date from now on. Feel free to show us with a thumbs up that we can keep you engaged with the content of our videos. Planets my very educated mother just served us nachos. With the help of this mnemonic, modified somewhat after Pluto's planetary status was dropped, many children today learn about the individual members of our planetary system. But what actually distinguishes Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune as planets? The official definition of the International Astronomical Union specifies three different basic criteria. Firstly, the object must move on its orbit around the Sun. At the same time, the mass of a celestial body must be sufficiently large so that it's in the hydrostatic equilibrium thus an approximately spherical shape. The last basic requirement that an astronomical body must fulfill in order to be considered a planet is that the entity must be the dominant object of its orbit. That is, it must be cleared of other objects in its gravitational field. As is well known, in the past decades, researchers have had the opportunity to take a close look at our galactic neighbors in the context of unmanned missions. High resolution images of the surface of Mars, for example, give us an authentic impression of the natural face of the red planet in detail. In view of such astronomical milestones, which have been achieved in the past, it seems all the more unbelievable that there may be another planet orbiting the solar system that is still completely unknown. The search for the mysterious Planet X is really no phenomenon of our modern days. In fact, it began as early as the late 19th century. But what actually points to the fact that our planetary system counts nine representatives? And why have the experts been groping in the dark for many decades to decipher this galactic mystery? Let's take a look together. A Search for Planet X even before the existence of Neptune could be conclusively proven, the planet's presence was predicted by the precise orbital analysis of Uranus. When finally there was no more doubt that Neptune really existed, the US American astronomer Percival Lowell postulated another planet in the realms of the outermost reaches of our planetary system, waiting to be confirmed in the course of detailed investigations. The presence of this undiscovered planet, which Lowell baptized Trans-Neptune, was thought to explain the observed orbital deviations of Uranus and Neptune. To finally add the ominous celestial body to the star charts, the expert founded the Lowell Observatory in Arizona in 1894. Although the meticulous search for Trans-Neptune took place over a period of more than 20 years, it was ultimately fruitless. In 1930, Pluto was finally discovered, and by 2006, it had the status of a planet. Since the true dimensions of the celestial body were clearly overestimated at the beginning, experts assumed at first that it was the influence of Pluto which caused the orbital deviations of Neptune and Uranus. But soon after, it became clear that today's dwarf planet is much too small to create the observed orbital characteristics of the ice giants, so the search for a previously undiscovered planet picked up speed again. However, it was no longer a hypothetical trans-Neptune, but an even more remote trans-Pluto that was to be added to the star chart. 
that presumed celestial body was also called Planet X in the ranks of the researchers. On the one hand, the X symbolized the Roman number 10, as our planetary system counted nine official representatives according to the definition at that time. Beyond that, the letter served appropriately as the symbol for the unknown. From the year 1957, it was above all the U.S. American Henry Lee Gickless who advanced this cosmic search for traces. The astronomer initiated a systematic photographic survey of the sky, which extended over a period of 18 years. This cosmic search, however, was fueled by the fact that the registered orbital disturbances of Neptune could still not be reconstructed without the existence of another planet. This would change only in the following decades, when in the field of astrophysics new realizations were attained, with the help of which the orbital deviations could be explained. Can Planet X exist? Although in the meantime many astronomical mysteries of the past have been decoded, the existence of a planet unknown up to now in our solar system is still not categorically excluded. One reason for this is the practically unlimited comet prehistory in the areas of the Kuiper Belt and the Oort Cloud. Thus, a planet orbiting further outside could cause constantly new matter from the Oort Cloud to reach the regions of the solar system lying further inward. If Planet X really exists, it is a true master of the cosmic game of hide-and-seek. Accordingly, the hypothetical celestial body has since been shown to not cause any noticeable orbital disturbances to the other outer members of the planetary system. It would also have successfully evaded all celestial surveys conducted to date. The highly elliptical orbit of Planet X would therefore be thousands of astronomical units from the Sun. Although the existence of such a planet cannot be excluded officially, the majority of experts represent the opinion that Planet X does not exist. It seems simply too improbable that the celestial body has been overlooked despite its own radiation in the context of the sky surveys so far. If one were to follow, however, the remarks of John Matisse and John B. Murray, Planet X not only very probably exists, but its enormous dimensions put even the mighty Jupiter easily to shame. Tyche In 1999, Murray and Matisse independently calculated the orbits of long-period comets. In the end, both experts came to a groundbreaking conclusion. Previously undiscovered celestial body would cause regular orbital disturbances in the astronomical bodies of the Oort cloud. As a result of the planet's influence, the corresponding comet orbits would thus be steered into the more inward regions of the solar system. To decipher the exact characteristics of this cosmic culprit, John Murray postulated a large planet named Tyche. As the candidate, the scientist estimated its own mass to a value between 1 and 10 Jupiter masses. At the same time, Tyche would pull its courses around the Sun at a distance of up to 50,000 astronomical units. An orbit of the celestial body around the central host star would therefore take 5.8 million years. The average temperature of the planet would be comparatively high with negative 94 degrees Fahrenheit. However, the postulated existence of Tyche is overshadowed by a not insignificant detail. According to our current knowledge, no planet could have formed in such a remote region during the formation of our solar system. But even for this, Murray has an explanation ready. It's conceivable that Tyche was originally formed in interstellar space and only integrated into the solar system over the course of time. Another explanation is based on the fact that the planet was formed once in a part of the solar system lying further inward and migrated as a result of an orbit change ever further outward. At present, Murray's Tyche theory can neither be confirmed nor falsified. What is certain, however, is that NASA's wise infrared space telescope has not been able to identify a Jupiter-sized celestial body within a 25,000 astronomical unit radius of the Sun. In fact, however, the discovery of Tyche would not be the first time that experts have reported finding a tenth or ninth member of our planetary system. In March 2004, for example, Sedna, which is about 600 miles across, was identified. In the summer of 2005, the discovery of Eris was announced. Immediately after its identification, the approximately 1,500-mile object was classified as the 10th planet by both NASA and the international press. In terms of its orbit and size, the body met all the planetary requirements in force at the time, which not least set the much-publicized planet discussion in 2006 in motion. 
As mentioned at the beginning, astronomers ultimately decided to redefine planet status. As a result, both Eris and Pluto were removed from the ranks of planets and placed in the newly created category of dwarf planets. We're interested in your opinion. What do you think about the mysterious Planet X? Do you believe that the frequently postulated celestial body actually exists? Write us your thoughts about this highly exciting question in the comments. Would you like to read more interesting articles about the most exciting discoveries and the most breathtaking spectacles in space? Then take a look at the other contributions on our channel, which we've linked for you in the credits. Thanks for your interest, take care, and we'll see you next time.